Welcome to another OCD Recovery Instagram Live. Two in one day today. I thought I would come on here and do another quick questions and answers. Um, so anything you want to ask in relation to OCD, put them in the comments below and I will go through all of these answering these questions. Uh, I had some more time today to come on and do this. I know everyone's got lots of questions during this difficult time at the moment uh, following COVID and then a lot of people having OCD relating to um, relate relating to re racism OCD um, and that's a, a new one that's well it's not a new one it's been around for ages but it's a new one that's bothering people um, and so I think I want to uh, I wanted to sort of Draw, draw, draw awareness to the fact that people are struggling at the moment. People are still in, a lot of people are still in their, uh, in their homes. Um, a lot of people are, uh, have got coronavirus related OCD. Uh, so finding it difficult integrating back into their jobs and out of their bubble, which they've been in for a while. Um, then there's obviously with this racism OCD it comes in various forms. People are worried about what if they get seen as a racist? What if something in their past gets dragged up that makes them look like a racist? What if they get attacked for being a racist? What if they say, uh, say some kind of racist words in public, which gets them a mob jump on them, uh, all that kind of stuff. So there's quite a lot of areas that OCD is getting into at the moment. So I thought I would cover um, well, I'm not going to talk on, on that topic. I was just saying that people are, on, um, are, are stressed at the moment. People are frustrated at the moment with uh, job losses and uh, being at home. Uh, so that doesn't help OCD and anxiety in general. Okay, let's have a look at some of these questions. Can OCD affect eating habits due to fear of losing control? Yes. Can, OCD can affect eating in many ways. It can affect eating in the sense of um, uh, what if I have an allergic reaction to something that I eat? What if, or feeling of not being able to eat because of being heavily anxious? Um, what other things can it be to do with? Um, do you, do you want to do you, do you describe that question a little bit more in a bit more detail so I can have a look at exactly what you mean there? OCD will make you doubt you have OCD, of course, uh, because you want to, uh, it's the, the way that people often think you can get out of OCD is by just going, oh yeah, so my OCD, no big deal. If it was that easy, it wouldn't be the disorder it is. So it's always going to try and say, no, it's real, because if you believed it was OCD 100%, it wouldn't bother you, it wouldn't bite. If our OCD is caused by watching a show, should you stop watching that show or just continue to expose yourself to it? Uh, you definitely don't want to avoid it. You want to expose to it. Best medicines for OCD. I don't discuss medication. You'll have to discuss that with your doctor. Is there a fear or theme regarding the concepts of what's good or evil? Yes, because it's, especially with religious OCD, what if I'm evil, what if I'm going to hell? Um, and then most a lot of OCD is, 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 is around the subject of um, what if I'm uh, good or bad, what if I'm a bad person? So we have to break down the concept of good and bad, which is covered in Albert Ellis, the founder of CBT's book, The Myth of Self-Esteem. And he specifically goes into that towards the end chapters and in chapter four, Psychotherapy and the Value of a Human. Uh, goes into that breaking that down in bullet points of why good and pe bad people do not exist. And understanding that is a real game changer because I, for one, believed in good and bad people for a long time and that's what kept me really stuck because when I was believing in bad people, I didn't want to be a bad person. So OCD would constantly look for things all the time which I thought made me a bad person. So it would just zoom in like a homing missile for any of those things that I believed would make me a bad person and latch and lock on in the background and stay locked on for a bloody long time. Knowing if it's racist OCD or white guilt. Don't get too lost in the concept of white guilt. Uh, this is 
a kind of modern terminology being used at the moment. Um, we don't want to, uh, you don't want to sort of confuse yourself with that because you could, you could, you can get completely lost with that. Um, you, you, you could see, you, you, there's so many variations of that in relation to other themes because you could have, uh, you, you, you could have guilt in relation to, um, in, in relation to harm OCD, false memories in the past, in relation to all kinds of sexual OCDs, sexual... I mean, you could attach the same thing to being gay and say you could have some kind of guilt for not being uh, accepting of gay people in the past coming forward or anything like that. Unconditional self and life acceptance gets under it all regardless, right? So seeing that humans can have racist beliefs, humans do. Um, and it, it, you know, there, there's a reason, there's lots of reasons, there's good, good TED Talks on this talking about that, of how people develop racist um, beliefs. And we have a sort of, uh, through evolution, uh, we, we, we are wary of other races anyway. So we have to combat that. Uh, by 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 making ourselves realise why we are thinking like that, or so on. So it's going to be natural for humans to do that anyway. Uh, it doesn't make them a good or a bad person. That's why reading that book, The Myth of Self Esteem, really helps get under that. But unconditional self acceptance gets under all of that. Could you recommend any harm OCD specialists? Um, I don't recommend any therapists on here I cover everything for OCD um, and we do that through I do that through one-to-one -one and group coaching uh, via Skype on here um, and so everything that you need to do with OCD I cover uh, so yeah I don't I don't recommend any uh, therapists um, I often get asked about that uh, because what I specifically do is um, I, I can only speak for myself and uh, it's what well, the reason I do what I do is because OCD I found for, for for all of my own struggle and time I was doing it is very 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 few people uh, understand OCD fully, um, and so recommending people is a very very difficult job to do. Uh, so I can only vouch for myself, not for others. Is depersonalization common with OCD? I can't get rid of these feelings and it scares me. Depersonalization is common with uh, OCD and you need to wear it like an uncomfortable coat. Stop trying to get rid of it. Problem is what you're doing is you're trying to escape a feeling, a sensation, which you need to just experience. If you were just having it as a kind of fleeting sensation that all humans went through, you wouldn't be scared. It's the feeling of, what if I'm stuck like this? What if this is never gonna go? What if this is my new way of living? What if all happiness is gone because this is my new state? And on and on and on, down that route. How do I help my fear of ERP not working? You're scared of being anxious, it's fear of fear. So that's how you've got to get under that quite a few ways that we do that to look at that and see why why that would be so scary whereas in reality you could be okay with that it's just that you're scared of it because uh because it seems very scary oh my god i don't want to suffer like i have done in the past forever that would be a disaster god my life would be ruined and so on but actually you could still do everything you could still function enough you could still live a hell of a lot better life than people with many other disorders and diseases. So it's, uh, it's about learning to see that you can stand it. It's not unbearable. And that learning to stand it is a key part of the recovery process. I know that it largely doesn't matter which theme you have, but what significance does it hold in the specific individual recovery journey and the steps needed to get better? Uh, it doesn't. It it do doesn't. But you have to. The exposures will obviously be specific to the individual thing that you fear. Uh, you, you, that will alter. And that will change in relation to the theme. That's about it. Uh, and then in in relation to breaking down the irrational beliefs relating to it, will be specific to that fear that you are um, that you, you that you are working with. Like not wanting to eat because then you feel guilty for eating a lot of food in this time when there's not a lot and then not eating because of it. Yeah, be, it's learning to come to accept even if you do eat a lot of food and learning to accept yourself if you do and there's nothing wrong with with eating food and changing your perspectives on both uh, on, on, on the, food, the food's view to you and on the food's view uh, in the sort of social context you're talking about.
No, you don't need to look at what happened in the past. That's an endless road and it's going to constantly tell you all the time you're nearly there, like you've got a key for an imaginary lock that you're going to unlock, except the, key, the, the lock doesn't exist and, 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 and you're not going to find it. And uh, that's, basically, that's basically what you're doing, an endless search that never gets there. Uh, recovery, yes, uh, for that question there by Just Jazzy, is yeah, recovery is where you'll no longer suffer from it. Cure, it doesn't exist yet. I think it'll be there'll be a cure in maybe five to ten years. But I don't. But for, in terms of recovery, you won't suffer any longer. I can't tell the difference between my life before I had OCD and and, and after. It makes no difference. I was doing really well and I had a setback, and now I feel like I've given up. How do I get unstuck and give up on? ERP. How do I get unstuck and not give up on ERP? You're going to have setbacks, part of the journey. You never meet anyone who says they've never had a setback. Setbacks are part of the thing. Uh, so setbacks, setbacks is all part of the process. They're, they're, they're going to be there. So don't, don't expect to not have any. It's like going to the gym and never getting any injury or any pain. You're going to do that. It's going to be part of what happens. OCD recovery is like a roller coaster ride and it's bumpy and it's got loads of uh, uh, peaks and troughs and then they level out more and more as we go along. But you're definitely going to see a lot of them on the way. Yes, when they move around the themes, the one that was bothering you before then sort of lays dormant to catch you at another time. So it feels like you often got over it, but you haven't. And then it raises its head. Uh, again, unconditional self-life and other acceptance gets under all of it. And that's because you're not in a position of acceptance and you're also not very good with uncertainty and probably not able to distance yourself from the thoughts as well as other additional knowledge of OCD that helps with the journey. But that's the reason why it still has the power. I am afraid of hearing other people's obsessions because I'm afraid I will get the same. You need to hear them. I couldn't do my job if I didn't hear them. I have to hear them all day long. Hearing them is the key, not running from them. Fear of sex intimacy because of intrusive thoughts. Have sex, be intimate, bring the intri intri intimate thoughts on for the ride. Do not sacrifice sex for OCD. For one to one coaching uh, in relation to Chloe's question, there, if you email info at ocdrecovery.com, I will cover that on there. OCD recovery is, OCD is not curable at this time. It's something that you can recover from, but cure, no, not at this time. But you don't need a cure. Recovery is where you can't tell the difference. So if someone said I can cure you tomorrow, it wouldn't make the tiniest difference to, to my life. Um, so, so, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too concerned about it not being curable. Yes, it will attack the thing that you care about most. It's going for that because you're trying to protect that in your head and you don't want it to go anywhere near that. How long does it take to get better? It's different for everyone. Everyone's journey is different. Uh, different factors involved that, that, that affect the, 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 the length of time. Focus on your own journey and uh, how that goes. Don't be too concerned about all other times. Uh, just because someone else got better in X amount of time doesn't mean you will uh, and vice versa. But usually we can move pretty quickly through things. Uh, you don't want to be, we're not talking about being stuck for years and years and years. We're talking about moving pretty quickly, but difference in uh, times. Cheating OCD, it's about learning to accept yourself even if you did cheat. Uh, that's the main thing. Learn to see it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's not ideal. It's not what you want. But if you did, it's not the end of the world by any means. And learning to make peace with yourself as a fallible human being that could make that mistake. And who even says that cheating isn't allowed? There's no universal law. We invented it for our relationships to protect them. And it's a good idea uh, if we believe in that to follow that and to do that. But if we step outside of the line, it's not the end of the world.
really got me when you said happiness is a moving destination in the last in his life. It certainly is. What makes you happy today won't make someone else happy uh, and vice versa. You know, if you just took a position of, say, money, for example, and somebody who's very, very rich, maybe or somebody who's who who uh, gets a new car uh, and isn't very rich, be over the moon about that car. But then someone who's had 100 cars might think it's very boring. So perspective on everything and things change. Uh, that was using that as an example, but there's so many other areas for somebody who's got uh, no legs and being able to walk would be the dream come true. But then for, our, for the rest of us, we forget about that and we take it all for granted. Um, okay, any last questions there? What kind of OCD do I have? Pretty much every type of theme, it morphing and moving into all different things. Uh, so various different forms, locked on and off for a very long time, uh, for many years, as well as being locked on one thing uh, for years and then being a mixture of things over other times. So variations of everything. And I cover a lot of it on, the, on, on social media, all about the journey and, uh, and what it was like. All right, guys, I will see you on the next Instagram Live. See you later.